Shalom, family Messiah Yeshua. Shalom to the worldwide YouTube and social media community. This is your beloved brother Shaul Yisrael. Come back again with another Yahweh inspired message. I'll be reading from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, and starting verse 14. 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, and starting verse 14. Again, 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, starting verse 14, and I read. Does not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given for, for a covering. Now, long hair on the woman covers her scalp. But a woman still must have her head veiled, as written in verse 5. But every woman that Worship Yahweh with a head unveiled, dishonors her head, for that even all one as if she was shaven. So for a woman to have a head unveiled, she disrespects the man, whether she's married or unmarried. For the head of woman is man, just as the head of man is Yeshua HaMashiach. But back to the subject at hand. Man Cut your hair, for it is a shame. It is a shame before Yahweh and men for men to have long hair. For Yahweh has given the woman long hair to differentiate herself from the man. So man, cut your hair. Get rid of, get rid of those dreadlocks. Get rid of those plaits. Cut your hair to a nice conservative level. And don't, don't, don't try to um, excuse or justify yourself by going to the vow of Nazarite. Turn to Numbers chapter 6. Uh, Numbers chapter 6 and verse 1. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When either man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow of a Nazarite, to separate themselves unto Yahweh, he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink, and shall drink no vinegar of wine or vinegar of strong drink, Neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes, nor eat more grapes or dried. All the days of his separation shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree, from the kernels, even to the husk. All the days of the vow of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head, until the days be fulfilled, in which he separates himself unto Yahweh. He shall be set apart and shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow. The vow of a Nazarite is not forever. It is only for a certain duration of time to separate oneself to Yahweh. In fact, the vow of a Nazarite is akin to fasting. The vow of a Nazareth is akin to fasting. Where one, in fasting, they're separating themselves unto Yahweh for a particular duration of time, for a particular purpose. But the vow of a Nazareth is the only exception for a man to grow his hair long. But men, you have not made a vow of a Nazareth. Because if you did, these are the parameters that you are abound by. Start at verse 1. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When either man or woman shall separate themselves to vow of a vow, a vow, a vow of a Nazarite, to separate themselves unto Yahweh, he shall separate himself from wine and a strong drink, and shall drink no vinegar or wine or vinegar or strong drink, 
Neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes, nor eat most grapes or dried. Uh, go to verse 7. He shall not make himself unclean for his father, or for his mother, for his brother, or for his sister, when they die, because the consequence of his ill is upon his head. All the days of his separation he is set apart unto Yahweh. And if, and if any man die very suddenly by him, and he, and he hath defiled the head of his consecration, then he shall shave his head in the day of his cleansing. On the seventh day shall he shave it. So, if one vows a vow of a Nazarite, these are the parameters that he must abide by during that vow of a Nazarite. But the vow of a Nazarite is not long-lasting. It's only for the particular period of time to achieve the purpose from Yahweh. Again, the vow of a Nazarite is akin to fasting. This, this, this is the only exception to men having their hair long. Uh, men not having their ha hair long. Men. But generally, it is a shame for men to have long hair. So men, cut your hair. Those who have long hair, they have not vowed a vow of a Nazarite, they are effeminate. You conduct yourself in an effeminate manner. Men with long hair. You conduct yourself in an effeminate manner. And it's written in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Be not deceived, not the fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. Those who seek to act like the opposite sex. Nor abuse of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. So my brothers, you need to cut your hair, brothers. You better cut your hair. Listen to the Holy Ghost warning you. Cut your hair. You haven't made no Bible knowledge right because if you did, you would be complying with the parameters set forth in the Numbers chapter 6. If you ain't bow Bible knowledge right, then you will sin, brother. For it is a shame for man to have long hair. It is a shame for a woman to cut her hair. So my blood brothers, you better cut your hair, brother. Lest you be found in error and sin. For sin is the transgression of the law of Yahweh. And the law of Yahweh exhorts and admonishes those who vow the vow of Nazarite, they can grow their hair long. But only for a set duration of time. To achieve the particular purpose they, that they are seeking from Yahweh. But after that purpose has been fulfilled, they have to shave the hair. They have to shave the head. But the general rule from the Holy Ghost, man have the hair short. Women have the hair long. Hair long. Men have the hair short. Women have the hair long. Even though women is given, given from y'all to have long hair, she still must have a head veiled. She must have a veil on the head when she worship Yahweh. That's inside the assembly and outside the assembly. So my beloved brothers, cut your hair, brother. Cut your hair. You're not some, you're not some woman. You will with long hair, your sister, you you're, you're conduct yourself in an in, in effeminate manner. You better cut your hair, brother. You're in transgression having your hair long, brother. You're not some woman, you're not some sissy. Cut your hair, brother. 
I exhort and admonish you by the Holy Ghost, repent of having long hair, brother. Humble yourself, brother. When you don't humble yourself, y'all gonna humble you. Because if you reject this message, you're abasing your you're, 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 you're abasing yourself, you're exalting yourself, and y'all would promise he'll humble you. So humble yourself, cut your hair, brother. For the purpose of Yahweh giving woman long hair is to differentiate herself from the man. Y'all gave man short hair to differentiate himself from the woman. That's why it's written in the scripture, a woman shall not wear that would pertain into a man. Neither shall man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are an abomination y'all unto y'all yell. That's why it's prohibited, it's forbidden for women to wear breeches, wear pants. Women who wear breeches, wear pants, they are in sin. Women who wear bridges, wear pads, they're acting in, in, in a feminine manner. They're conducting themselves as if they were men. So women, come out your bridges, come out your pants and put on a long dress. Women, come out your bridges, come out your pants and put on a long dress. Learn to veil your head. head. For it's commanded of the Holy Ghost for women to have a head veiled, have a head covered. It's forbidden. It's forbidden for men to have their hair long. So brother, cut your hair. Women, don't cut your hair. Don't go to the petition parlor they get, they get, you get, uh, get all these full of styles in your head and learn to veil your head. And stop wearing britches. Stop wearing pants for that bridges and pants pertain to men. Don't let Western society deceive you. Bridges and pants pertain to men. The while there are zippers on the front signifying that it pertains to men. So women, the book probably said a woman shall not, shall not whether it would pertain unto a man, now shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto Yahweh El. This is the scriptural dress code. That all those who believe the scripture, those who have been born of Yahweh, would adhere to. Men, short hair, not wearing dresses, skirts like women, Women having their head veiled, they not cutting their hair, and they're wearing long dresses. No jewelry, no makeup on both men and women. They're to go natural. They'll be modest. Listen to the Holy Ghost now. Listen to the Holy Ghost. Don't wax stone against the Holy Ghost. What you do, y'all will judge you. Y'all will send his fiery rebukes, his fiery indignation, his sore chastisement upon you, his grievous plagues upon you who reject this word from the Holy Ghost. So, my beloved brother, you better cut your hair, brother. Don't wax down against it. May Yahweh send his fiery rebukes upon you. May Yahweh send his fiery indignation upon you. Women, come out your britches, come out your pants. For you're no man. You need to stop acting like a man and put on a woman uh, on a long dress. No more jewelry, no more makeup. You're not some whore. It's time to submit to the word of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost calling you to repent both man and woman. Repent. Repent. Turn from the foolish and effeminate and wretched fashions of this world system and submit yourself unto the word of Yahweh. It's time for you to be reconciled to Yahweh. 
In order to be reconciled to Yahweh, you must be born again. And to be born again, you must be baptized in water in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach for both the pardon of sin and the regeneration of your soul. The purpose of water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ is to grant you pardon of sins and to grant you regeneration of your soul. The purpose of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is to circumcise your heart, to seal you unto Yahweh. And there is only one scriptural, initial, and external proof that a person has received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that is speaking in another tongue and Yahweh permits one to speak. If you never spoke in another tongue and Yahweh permitted you to speak, you never received the Holy Ghost. And you're not sealed unto Yahweh. Your heart is not circumcised. And you have not taken on the renewed man. For both the water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ and the baptism of the Holy Spirit are complementary to one another. For the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ and the baptism of the Holy Spirit cause you to take on the renewed man. The man that is reconciled unto Yahweh. In order to know Yahweh, you must become the renewed man. In order to become the renewed man, you must be born again. That's Yehudi or Goyim. That Jew or Gentile. That black or white. That bond or free. You must be born again to be reconciled unto Yahweh. In order to be born again, you must repent of your sin. You must be baptized in water in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach for both the pardon of sin and for the regeneration of your soul. You must receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit as initially evident by speaking another tongue and Yahweh permits one to speak. You must be born again. In order to make, for, make the first resurrection, you must be born again to be qualified for it. In order to abide in perfect righteousness, you must be born again. In order to comprehend the instruction for women not to wear that pertain to men and for men not to wear that to, pertain to women, you must be born again. You hear the words of the Holy Ghost. Don't reject these words of the Holy Ghost. But it's such a rejection of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah, you're cleaving close and close to reprobation. And reprobation will reserve you for damnation. Rejection of the word of the Holy Ghost will cause you to cleave unto reprobation that will reserve your ticket for damnation. Reject the word of the Holy Ghost, you will begin to cleave unto reprobation that will reserve your ticket for damnation. Do you want to be damned? But if you don't mind being damned, if you don't mind suffering for eternity, for there's two choices. There's the kingdom of Yahweh and there's eternal suffering in the fires of hell, fire, and brimstone. There's the eternal kingdom of Yahweh and then there's eternal suffering in a lake of fire with birth of fire and brimstone. That's the fate of the wicked. If you reject these words of the Holy Ghost from the mouth of his set-apart messengers, you are cleaving unto reprobation that will reserve your ticket for eternal damnation. That's eternal suffering in the fires of hell, fire, and brimstone. And when you're cast into the lake of fire, there's no parole, there's no release, there's no escape from the lake of fire. So don't reject the words of the Holy Ghost. Don't do it. Don't do it. I don't care who you are. I don't care how big and bad you think you are. I don't think how many people you got with you. You reject the word of the Holy Ghost, you are cleaving to reprobation and you are reserving your ticket for eternal damnation. O oh, Yahweh, in the name of your beloved Son, grant and understand the whoso will that you have chosen. 
those hearts that you have elected before the foundation of the Shalim and the Eretz. You open and let it receive your word and you bring forth fruit unto your glory, honor and praise. Those who are not chosen to salvation, I pray you allow the word of your spirit to cut them to the heart, to manifest the spirit of damnation upon them. And you send forth your fiery rebukes, your fiery indignation, your sore chastisement, and your grief played upon those who are scoffers, those who are unbelievers, those who are infidels, and those who are wicked persons who despise and reject your spirit. Let your name, O Yahweh, be exalted in the earth. Let miracles, wonders, and signs be performed by the name of your beloved Son, Yeshua of Nazareth. I give you glory, honor, and praise, O Yahweh. I thank you, O Yahweh, for stirring your servant to speak forth your word of truth. In the name of your beloved Son, Yeshua HaMashiach, so be it, so be it, Shalom.